So I'm starting off with this black fringy t-shirt as my first shirt that I'm going to transform. And I'm going to intro two ways to design your new top from an older t-shirt or other material. The first is more complex, which is what I'm doing here, and it's what I chose to do for this video, which is drafting a bodice block from scratch and then adjusting it to fit my designs and stretching my material accordingly. So for those that are interested, I will leave the tutorial I used to draft this bodice block down below. This method is more complex, but it is more accurate since it uses your exact body measurements. The simpler way to draft a design is by cloning existing clothes that you own that might have a similar amount of stretch as the fabric that you'll be using. As you can see here, I'm using the pink shirt that I already own to make a new top from this white sweater, and they have about the same amount of horizontal stretch. This I'm just using as an example, but I'm taking my pink shirt and folding it in half and tracing along all of the edges to get the general shape. And then once you have your shape roughed out, you can come back and connect any dots and true up any lines. This is a nice way to kind of dip your toe into drafting patterns because you can use the proportions of the shirt to lay out your design elements. You can see that I marked the edge of the shoulder where the sleeve and the shoulder connected in the pink shirt and then used that as a reference point to mark my new neckline and my new armhole. So with this method and the one I showed before, you're going to want to make sure that the neckline is both wide enough and has enough stretch to actually fit over the widest part of your head. If you're worried about it, I would give yourself more width in the neck hole than you think you'll need. I added a seam allowance to all the sides that are going to be sewn together and then marked the fold on this cloned pattern. You see the two different methods here. On the left, I have the bodice block that was drafted from my exact body measurements and on the right, the one that was cloned from my clothes. The left is going to be more accurate, but the right is a great place to get started. Now to actually start the sewing, I'm going to start by separating the shirt at the side seams and the shoulders and then removing the trim. Then I'm going to fold one panel in half and lay my pattern piece out and cut along my pattern. Repeat that with the other panel and then pin right sides together and sew at the side seams and at the shoulders with your designated seam allowance, minus half an inch. So before jumping into sewing, I did want to call out some tools that will optimize the look of your garment on your home sewing machine. One is a walking foot, there is matching bobbin and thread, and then you're going to want a twin stretch needle and a jersey needle, ballpoint needle, or stretch needle. I'll link the two needles that I used here down below. I get them from Amazon as they're cheap and accessible. And then I'm going to sew with these settings on a zigzag stitch. I recommend testing your settings on a piece of scrap fabric before actually sewing. And if you find you're having problems with your zigzag not stretching far enough with the stretch of your fabric, I would increase the width and decrease the length. Make sure you're back stitching at the front and back of each side seam and shoulder seam. And since I have black thread on black fabric, I'm marking with Taylor's chalk over my stitches so I don't cut into them when I trim down my seam. A helpful tip if you have a design element like a v-neck is using some basting stitches to secure that pointed area to prevent it from stretching, ripping, or distorting between sewing and trying it on. And then you will remove these stitches at the end, but it just helps to keep it nice and pointed. It's time now to make the binding that will finish the neckline and armholes nicely. It's almost always cut on the horizontal stretch, but the only material I had left from this shirt was a vertical scrap. So luckily my material had enough vertical stretch that I was able to use it. But essentially you're just cutting strips of fabric with the length of your armhole and neckline that we're going to use to attach to that area. After measuring the length of the armholes and neckline, I'm then cutting strips and sewing them right sides together with a zigzag stitch to create fabric loops. Like 
And then I'm going to pin those loops in place around the armholes and neckline and match seams where needed. And then sew with a zigzag stitch at your designated seam allowance, mine is half an inch. To get the pointed V part of the V-neck, I'm cutting straight down the center of the V, getting as close to my stitches as possible without cutting. I place a pin right at that apex so I don't cut into them. And then I'm going to overlap one side over the other and secure it with pins. Fold the binding over to the inside and pin all the way around. I'm securing the top fold with a few hand stitches since the twin needle I will be going in with next won't catch that part of the binding. My machine has very specific settings for using a twin needle, so I would definitely consult your manual to figure out what your machine needs. And these stitches are being sewn on the right side of the shirt because the twin needle top stitches two parallel rows of stitching on the top side of the shirt and then has zigzag stitches on the wrong side, which allows it to stretch. Now moving on to the hem, when working with knits I like to sew a line of basting stitches half inch from the bottom and use that as a guide to fold over my hem. Just folding it over once and pinning it down. Then I top stitch with my twin needle and remove the basting stitches afterwards. This is the next t-shirt that I'll be transforming. This one had less stretch, so I adapted my bodice block accordingly. If you're tracing over your clothes, make sure that the shirt you are tracing has the same amount of stretch. And for this top, I didn't separate the pieces, I'm just folding the t-shirt in half and then cutting around my pattern on top of that folded shirt. And then I'm of course pinning right sides together and sewing with a zigzag stitch along the side seams and the shoulders. And then trimming my seams down so they're less bulky. Again, I'm making binding strips, this time on the horizontal stretch. Take note of the width of the neckline and stretch to be sure it will fit over your head. I cut my binding strips at an inch and a half, but they can be any width as long as they're at least three times your seam allowance. And then I pinned right sides together and sewed with a zigzag stitch to make loops as I did before. After sewing with your zigzag stitch, fold over to the inside and pin. And again, I'm top stitching with my twin needle. If you find you're having issues with your seams becoming wavy after you've sewn them, there are stabilizers on the market for knit fabric that help with reducing waviness and stretched hems and seams.
And that's about it for both these shirts, so let's take a look at the finished pieces. So casually keep diving into concrete So bittersweet 